Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. God is good how often? All and all the time. Find somebody close by, look at them real good, say neighbor, neighbor. God, loves God loves you. And I do too. And, I do too. and if you love me, as much as I love you, then nothing can break. I love into. I love. Amen. Surely the Bible is right when it says that the steadfast mercies of the Lord, they never cease. They are new every morning. Great is the Lord's faithfulness. And surely we are all recipients of the Lord's mercy on this morning. We're preaching. You don't know my business. How you know I got mercy? I'm looking at you right now. None of us, by any stretch of the imagination, deserve for God to bless us the way that he blesses us. But we are only able to receive that because of the mercy of God. Where would you be this morning had it not been for the mercy of God? What is mercy? Mercy is God keeping from you those things that you deserve. What do you deserve? Death, hell, and damnation. But in spite of, God decides to bless us every day and he gives you new mercies, new breath for you to breathe, new steps for you to make, new food you got to eat. The Lord is good not just some of the time, but he's good all of the time. When you are no good, God is still good. Somebody says, so the coffee like Campbell soup. He just uh, uh, good. Good God Almighty. Amen. And I got to ask you a question. Who wouldn't serve a God like him? I tell you, you got to have, you got, you, you got to have not good, bad sense to be able to serve the Lord. And I tell you, anybody that recognizes by any stretch of the imagination that I am only able to do what I do, how I do, when I do it, not of my own accord and not of my own strength, but because the Lord said, hey, take a step. Because the Lord said, hey, you take a breath. I'm only able to do these things because of the strength of God. And if he withdraw himself from us. Just decide if God treated you like you treat him. Where would we be on this morning? Had it been for that. We're, I'm just so thankful to see everyone that has come out on this morning. And we want to take a moment and thank all of you that are tuned in, watching us via live stream on this morning. Whether you're watching via Facebook Live, whether you watch by YouTube, Twitter. We're just glad that you decided to join us here this morning at the Sweetwater Church of Christ. And by my, by my view, it says that I have about 40 people right now that are on on Facebook. It says that I got about 40 people. So I need y'all to do me a favor. I need you to do something real quick. Not going to take you long. I need you to just take one second and invite somebody to church. This is going to be the easiest chance, the easiest opportunity. You ain't got to worry about pulling up to the house, knocking on the door, them people out the shade, not coming. You ain't got to worry about, hey, I'm going to show up at the church and they not show up. You ain't got to worry about none of that. All I need you to do is hit that button right there to say share, start a watch party, go ahead and do that. All of us in here do it as well as we sing. I heard an old, old story, how Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. And I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood atoning, and then I repented of my sins and won the victory. And oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. Uh, he sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. Uh, he loved me and I knew him and all my love is to him. Uh, he plunged me to victory the cleansing flood and oh victory in Jesus my Savior forever uh, he sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood uh, he loved me and I knew him and all my love is to him uh, he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Amen.
man, since our dear brother had it sounding like we was up under a tent somewhere this morning, I just decided to keep it on rolling. Amen. Some of those songs I ain't heard in a while, but I tell you, they're good, ain't they? Those songs, but let me tell you, when you're going through some trying times in your life and can't nothing else encourage you, you can just strike out with a pass me not, though gentle say. It's just something about an old hymn, something about those old songs that when you're down and when you're out, you can find one that you can bring out and just start singing. And man, tears start falling down your eyes, and man, all of a sudden you just lose control, thinking about how true those words are to know that I got somebody that when trouble is arising on every side, I got somebody I can run to and I can take in my, my, my troubles. But I'm so glad this morning we're going to be continuing um, as we have been these past few weeks on a series of lessons dealing with the life of Abraham. Have y'all learned anything so far? Have you learned anything so far? We, we've been talking about the life of Abraham and on week one, um, we got an introduction to the man Abraham. We talked about where he was from, where God called him, how God called him, and all it took for him to follow the call of God. So we talked about that. And then on last week, we dealt with what? Okay, I guess I was here. Okay, we, we dealt. Amen. I ain't going to hold it against you. I charge it to your heart, not your head. Amen. I mean, on last week, on last week, we dealt with the commitment. Okay. All right. All right. To make sure you're taking notes today because I'm going to be asking questions. Make sure. Make sure. Um, when we talked about the commitment of Abraham and we talked about in reference to our lives that if you are going to walk with God by faith, that you are going to have to be a person that is committed. You're not going to be able to be halfway in with God, but you got to be what? You got to be all or nothing. You got to be all in with God. So I want to continue. We began the first part of Genesis chapter 12 on last week. But today I want us to start in verse number 10, and we're going to read on down to verse number 20 today. Um, because as we talked about in week one and we talked about on last week as well, this life that we live is a pilgrimage. This life that we live is a pilgrimage, and all of us at this moment right now are traveling on a road to somewhere. And I'm sure you have figured out by now that as you've been walking with God, as you've been walking with Christ, the road will not always be smooth sailing. The, the, the road will not always be laid out with ease. Every now and then, there will be some twists and some turns on the road that you do not expect. There will be some dips. There will be some humps along the road. So let, let us look this morning, Genesis chapter 12, and we're going to begin at verse number 10. Grass will the flower fade, but the word of God shall stand forever. Genesis chapter 12, beginning at verse number 10, the Bible says, And there was a famine in the land, and I want you to remember, remember this right here. And Abram went down into Egypt. I want you to remember that. He went down into Egypt. And Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there, for a famine was grievous in the land. And it came to pass when he was come near to enter into Egypt that he said unto Sarai, his wife, Behold now, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Sarai wasn't ugly. She was, she, was, she was nice looking. He said that she was nice to look upon. She may have been the Beyonce of their day. I don't know. But he said that, hey, I know that you are a fair woman to look upon. And therefore it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee that they shall say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. So he says, say, I pray thee that you ain't my wife, but you my sister. Yeah. Oh, my God. Man, man, that, this man made a good TV show right here. And, and, and thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake, and my soul shall live because of thee. And it came to pass that when Abram was coming to Egypt, the Egyptians beheld the woman that she was very fair. And the princes also of Pharaoh saw her and commanded her before Pharaoh, and the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. And he entreated Abram well for her sake, and he had sheep and oxen and, and asses and men servants and maid servants and she asses and camels. And the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarah, Abram's wife. And Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this that thou hast done unto me? Why didst thou not tell me that she was your wife? Why did you say to me that she was your sister 
so I might have taken her to me for my wife. Now therefore, behold thy wife, take her and go thy way. And Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away with his wife and all that he had. I want to talk about today the road of Abraham. The road of Abraham. We have before us this morning what is probably the saddest event in the entire life of Abraham. We see him making a decision that will bring tremendous trouble into his life and into ours as well. Our text tells us that during a time of famine in Canaan, Abram took his family and moved into the land of Egypt. Now, in the Bible, Egypt is always presented to us as a picture and a type of the world. It was where the children of Israel were held in bondage to Pharaoh for 400 years. And even after they were delivered by the power of God, they still longed for what they had left behind there in Egypt. You read about that in Exodus chapter 16 and verse number 3. And, and that's just like us sometimes. Regardless of how the Lord blesses us, there's still a part of us that looks back to the world that you left behind. I, Lord, I want to be a Christian. I want to be a good, good kind of Christian. I want to live for you. I want to serve you. But that stuff that I left behind, Lord, it really does not seem that bad. And, and as we see this man make his journey into Egypt, there are some truths about the path, the road that he took into Egypt that we need to notice on this morning. And this morning, I want to talk about the road of Abraham. And the first thing about this road, and I want you to understand, as we read in verse number 10, is that this road was a downward path. This road was a downward path. We read where it says, and he went down into Egypt. When a believer leaves Canaan, which is the place of victory and blessing, to go to Egypt, meaning the world, it always leads them down. Look at Jonah, how he went down into Nineveh. Amos described it as well as a low place, and it led him down from the land of promise. Now, the land of Canaan represented God's best for Abram. The best, what he had prepared for Abram. And the Canaan land was where he was supposed to be. Now notice, there is no place more precious than the place that God wants you to be this morning. But isn't it true that oftentimes the place that God wants us to be is not where we want to be? And sometimes, just like a child that don't want to leave out the stove, God got to drag us out kicking and screaming to get us where he wants us to be because sometimes we get just a little bit too comfortable where we want to be. It led him down into the land of preparation. Her preparation for what? The famine in Canaan was not a punishment for sin, but rather it was a test of faith. It was a contrast to what Ruth was going on in Ruth chapter 1. And he left God's best and ran away from God's test. That was good right there. He left God's best and he ended up running away from God's test. Now, real faith will always be tested. Say that with me. Real faith will always be tested. The great test is to submit to the test and to trust God instead of running away from those things that you might be afraid of. Look at the widow of Zarephath in 1 Kings chapter 17. Abram was to choose the uncertainty of Canaan over the abundance of Egypt. Now, it led him down to the land of provision. God had promised to bless Abram in Canaan. That you find that in Genesis chapter 12 and verse number 2. And Canaan was also the place of God's rest for Abram. Now, only there could he rest in the arms of providence and trust God to take care of him. Now, I want to tell you this morning, the best place to be is where the Lord places you. I'll say that one more time. The best place for you to be is not where you want to be, but to be where God places you. 
and understand that where God places you might not always be the most comfortable place for you. But if you ever expect to advance in faith and advance in the knowledge of Christ, you are going to have to be placed in some situations that make you uncomfortable. Because it is only after you have been uncomfortable, and it's only after your shoes that got too tight on your foot and your, and your tip is just about to bust out the scene that you understand, man, it's time for me to move on to another side. And it's only after God has put you in a place where you get uncomfortable you say, hey man, I can't stay here any longer. I got to move on to the next place. Now, this path for Abraham, this road for him was a disobedient road. It was a disobedient road. Now, Abraham birthed a lie. He birthed a lie. Don't talk about Abraham. You birthed lies as well. <laughs> he birthed a lie. Now, it's a sad day when a believer turns away from the truth and embraces a lie. This may be the saddest episode in Abram's life, and it is forever preserved in the word of God. We can learn from his mistake. We all have those times when we birth a lie in our hearts to try and justify the things that we do and the things that we allow in our lives. It's a sad day when that happens, when you know what you're doing is wrong, but within your mind you got all the reasons to justify why it is correct. So not only did Abram birth a lie, but eventually, Abram became a lie. After he told the lie, he began to live the lie. One lie always leads to, come on somebody, this is clearly seen, look at David's life. The lies and the actions following his adultery with Bathsheba, one lie always leads to another lie to cover up that lie and another to cover up that one. And sooner or later, you forgot the lies that you told and somebody come around and ask you about what you said and man, you can't remember the lies there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Abram believed the lie that he told. He came to believe the lie that he fabricated more than the truth that he received from God. Verse 12 tells us that Abram was worried about something that could, never, that could never happen. He could not die because God's promise to him had not yet been fulfilled. There's always, that's all, this is always sin's way. You remember Eve's sin because she believed the devil's lies more than she believed God. Now, Peter fell because he believed his own lies more than he believed the word of the Lord. Let me tell you, sometimes you can get so consumed in your lies that you begin to live your lies. This road for him became a disastrous road. Abram's sin had the potential to cause other people to fall. Pharaoh could have taken Sarai to be his wife. When a believer enters Egypt spiritually, it causes others to fall and to stay away. Gandhi, y'all know the man Gandhi. We're world renowned. Gandhi said that the reason he never became a Christian was because of other Christians. Look at all the good that the man did for the world. But he said the only reason he never became a Christian was because of other Christians. Can you see how the deeds that you do in your life do not just affect you, but they affect everybody that is around you. And you as a child of God never want to become a stumbling block to anybody that's trying to walk the straight and narrow with Christ. You never want to be that person that's blocking between where a person is and where God wants them to be. But can you see how his lies not only affected him, but it affected everybody that was connected to him. Abram's sin 
brought God's hand of judgment into the situation. Yeah. Wouldn't it be a shame to know that our sin caused a believer to stop? Or a sinner to be confirmed in their decision for hell? What do you mean, preacher? Because people see the way that we Christians live, so therefore they figure, hey, I'm doing just as good living out here like I am. I ain't no need to be coming in there and being fake and phony like y'all, you know. And you know, which is why I couldn't understand for the life of me, Brother Denson, why folk didn't want to wear a mask to church. Folk been wearing masks to church for years. You know, we just couldn't see it. <laughs> Let's get back That's on the road good. with Abraham. That's good, that was good. The Bible tells us that Abram left Egypt with more than he had when he went in. This is not always the case. Look at the prodigal son. He came back with less than what he had when he went out. But sometimes the believer will prosper in a far country. Sometimes the believer can prosper in a far country. However, those things that people think are gain are often really lost. Among the servants Abram acquired while they were there was an Egyptian girl named Hagar. Sounds familiar, you know he acquired a little girl there by the name of Hagar, according to Genesis chapter 16, verses 1 through 3. And she became a problem for Abram and Sarah, and Abram's sin with her still has consequences in the world today. The lesson here is, what we think are the world's best blessings are oftentimes life's biggest burdens. What we think are oftentimes life's biggest blessings are oftentimes your biggest burdens. Yeah. So Abraham's road for him becomes a disappointing road for him. The world and all of its allurements can never satisfy the soul that has tasted of the goodness of the Lord. That is why people, people in this world, even those that say they don't believe in God, they're constantly looking for something. Yeah. They're constantly searching because the soul of a man longs for its creator. Yeah. Yeah. The soul of a man longs for the one from which it originated from. And you can live in this world, accumulate all the money that you want to accumulate, accumulate all the property that you want to accumulate, and have all of these things. But if your soul don't know the Lord, you'll be walking around a billion and say, man, it's something that I'm missing. You can have all the friends in the world and say, hey, man, it's still something that I am missing. It's because there's a place within your heart. I don't care how fine she is. She can't feel that spot. I don't care how handsome he is to you. She, he just can't fit that spot. No man, no woman in this world was ever created to fill that void on the inside of your heart. Only Jesus. Only Jesus can fill that empty spot in your life. And once he fills that spot, do I have anybody here that can say, oh, what a change it'll bring about in your life? Oh, what a difference it'll make in your life when you start, when you stop running from here and there and everywhere trying to find. And have you ever, uh, and I don't, don't let me get in your business, but have you ever Come on, lost who you were Come on. trying to please somebody else to get them to accept who you are? Man, I came to tell you, I'm at a place in my life. I am created in the image of God. Where I am right now, God placed me there because that is where he wants me. If you can't accept me with the God that I serve, then you don't want none of me in your life. Tell somebody, I'm a package deal. You don't just get me, but you get the God that come along with me. And if you don't like my God, you don't like me. If you don't want to serve my God, you don't want to be around me. If folk know you, they ought to know the Lord. What you say, 
everybody, if folk know you, they ought to know the Lord because you are a living epistle. Amen. You are the one that he has called to be his witness and his example in the world. We are to be those cities. Said high on the hill. You ever seen a lighthouse? Set up on, and you ever notice the lighthouse is always out there, seems like on the edge. Yeah. Right out there on the water. And let me tell you, I don't care if that ship coming in from the north, if it's coming in from the south, the east, or the west, wherever it's coming in from, it's going to be able to see that light that set up on the hill. Do you not know that we are living in a time right now where people are walking in darkness? People are walking in confusion. People are walking around afraid because they don't know what tomorrow is going to Brain. They don't know what the next week is going to bring, but when they are walking around during those dark times, they ought to be able to look to us and see a light that's leading them to somebody that can help them with the situation that they have going on in this life. Let's get back on the road with Abraham. Yeah. Abram lost his testimony in Egypt. He is even told by Pharaoh Get her and go, in so many words. <laughs> Get, hey, hey, man, I, I, hey, man, I, don't, I don't want none of these problems that y'all got. Hey, take her, all y'all stuff, and get this. Yes, <laughs> sir. <laughs> he was literally, listen, kicked out of the world by the world. The name Egypt means the fact the world. So he was literally kicked out of the world by the world. Does the world seek to turn you around? Or they seek to invite you in the way they have going on? Lost people never forget a ruined testimony. What do you mean, preacher? They may never remember your good works but they will never forget your failures. What do you hear more about? When Peter preached on Pentecost or when he denied the Lord three times? What do you hear more about the other Destiny? David in the ark or David in Bathsheba? No matter how much Good you do in the world. On, One little bit of bad is all people are ever going to remember. But the good thing about it is Tom, Sue, or Harry ain't going to be standing before you on the day of judgment. It is only the Lord Jesus Christ that is going to stand before you on that day and he's going to bring to remembrance those things that you have done. So tell brother and sister why you sit back studying me, why you sit back looking at me, why you sit that word at me. I'm walking down the king's highway. I'm trying to get my business fixed. I'm trying to get my mind in line. I'm trying to get my life in the place that it needs to be because when I stand before the master, I want to hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou have been faithful over a few things. I shall make you ruler over a minute. Come on up a little higher. Enter into the joy's life. So remember, God forgets. People don't forget. In Egypt, Abram didn't have an altar. And we just talked about on last week that everywhere the man went, what did he do? He built an altar. And he worshiped God. But here in Egypt, he didn't have an altar. He offered no sacrifices in Egypt. And he lifted up no prayers while he was there. He totally left God out of what he was doing. And can you see the trouble that you find yourself in yeah. when you leave God out of your plans? When you leave God out of what you are doing? Anything that don't have God in it is bound to fail. It's bound to fail. When in the world the child of God should not live like the world. 
but you should be set apart. Yep. It should be set apart. That this is a tragedy within itself when you cannot tell the difference between Come on now. the church Jesus. and the world. Jesus. God himself said no man can serve two masters. Amen. Either you're going to love one and hate the other, or you're going to cleave to one and you're going to leave the other. What I look like up here with two suits on? <laughs> After, you know, if the air ain't kicking just right, I might just pop, hit the floor, you know, get a little too high, you know, whatever, and looking up here, I can only wear one at a time. Amen. So I have to choose which one I'm going to wear. How many of y'all can drive two cars at one time? You're a talented individual. Nobody can be it both at the same time. Amen. You got to choose. Either I'm going to serve God or I'm going to serve me. Oh, and you can't straddle the fence. Because you can only straddle for so long until you lose your balance and you're going to fall on either side. What good does it do you to try to stay in the middle ground? Okay, Lord, I, I know you got blessings. I know you got everlasting life. All that stuff that I want, you got it. All that stuff that my soul longs for, you got it, and it sounds good, but this over here appeals to my flesh. This over here is, is what my desires are longing after. And y'all remember the cartoons when uh, somebody was getting ready to make a decision or a choice and it'll pop up a little devil over here and you got an angel over here? Yeah. And I don't know why, as cute as the angel would be, and, and, and as good as the advice would be that the angel was given, oftentimes the angel would get dumped off the shoulder. <laughs> because the devil, his words seem just a little bit more soothing and just a little bit more... Uh, going along with what we were doing. Can I tell you, every day that you wake up and say good morning, you have to make a decision of which road you're going to walk down. Every day, every morning you wake up, you have to make a decision. Am I going to do right or am I going to do wrong? And, I, and can I tell you, from you leaving your house and going to work or wherever you go and the stop that you make, temptation is everywhere. Temptation is on your TV. That's why you don't go past 300. Temptation is on your radio. Temptation is here. Temptation is there. Everywhere you go, there's something out there that wishes to pull away your attention from God. That is why you have to be a person that's focused. And unless you are focused on the goal, and what is our goal? I, I, our goal is not just to come here and, and, and just waste time. This is not a Rotary Club. This is not a Coastmasters Club. This is not any of that. This is the Lord's Church, yeah. which is the only vehicle that's bound for glory. So that is why we come here. That is why we worship. That is why we pray. That is why we serve. And, and, and I want us to get ready because as, as God has blessed us, to get almost to the end, to the close. We're now at a better place in this pandemic. I want us to get ready to get back all in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I want us to get ready. I want us to get ready to get back all in. I want us to get ready to get our focus back. I want us to get ready to get our joy back because I know this time being away has been a drag for us. It may have drained your spirit. You may have gotten a little weary. You may have gotten a little set aside, but I want you to get ready because there are still souls that still need to be saved. The word of God still needs to be spread. There's still a message that needs to be rang aloud in Duval County, Clay County, surrounding and that is that Jesus Christ, he is alive and he is well, he is still in the soul saving men. And if you want to be saved, your soul, your sin needs to be washed away. We still got to get that message out to people. So, so I want you to rekindle the fire. I want you, I want you to find and got a little dim. I want you to go ahead and start getting ready, getting ready because we are getting ready to get back on fire for God. Get back on fire for God. So, so in, in closing, in closing, instead, instead of bringing the light of the one true God into the darkness of Egypt, 
Abram, by his lies, only brought more darkness. He was not salt and light as he should have been. And I want you to know that when you walk out of Canaan and get ready to go into Egypt, you cannot be what God has not called you to be. Amen. Never conform to the ways of this world. Yes, yes. But you always be somebody, I don't care what crowd you're in, what company you're in, you always be a standout. Amen. Always live in such a way that people can tell that there's something different about you. It is a tragedy when believers leave the world worse off than the way they found it. So I want to ask you, where is your tent pitched this morning? I want to ask you, are you camping toward Canaan? Firmly fixed on the land of blessing, victory, testimony, or have you gone down into Egypt? All it takes to get to Egypt is a little compromise here and there. And before you mow it, you are miles away from where the Lord wants you to be. You will never prosper as long as you are not where God wants you to be. So my advice to you this morning, come on home. Come on home. Rebuild your altar and live for Jesus. Like you know he is worth you living for. Yeah, that's good, and I say it like this. Yeah. He died for you. Why not live for him? Yeah. He died for you. Thank you. So why not live for him? So looking at the road of Abraham. You put your road next to Abraham's road. Abraham's road. You're going to find some similarities. Because all of us. At some point along the road, yeah. have told a lie, yeah. Yeah. have made a decision Come on, yeah. that got you into some trouble yeah. that wasn't easy to get out of. Yes, yes sir. Yeah. That's right. Oh, you know, sir, it wasn't that but a white lie. I don't care if it was white lie, green lie, blue lie, red lie, indigo lie, it was still a lie. Yeah. And the Bible says that a liar. Can't tell me that. Come on, I know sometimes on, it seems like the easiest thing to Come do on, is to tell a lie. On, because sometimes we feel like the individual may not be able to count the truth. Yeah. Come on, but the only way for true healing to take place yes, yeah. is for you to just be real about Come the situation. On, sure. Because once you have gotten it out, now you are no longer walking around feeling guilty on, because you haven't told the person the truth. Come on, preacher. And as I said, after a while, man, after you told lie, after lie, after lie, after lie, 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 after lie, mm -hmm. you're going to forget something. Yeah. 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 And man, you might not forget how, the way you said it, but you might forget the way you worded it. Yes, sir. And now they say, man, well, I thought you said, hold on a minute. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what I said. Well, no, nah, man, I just said that. That ain't what you really said. Oh. oh not a lot. Now you've got yourself caught. <laughs> so now you got to tell another to come up that way. Just be real. And I, I learned something. Even if people can't handle the truth, it's best to tell the truth. Yes, sir. Even if it takes them a little time to digest the truth. Yes, sir. And they say, hey, I might, I, I, hey, I can't look at you right now because you might catch a left or a right. So I just need to take a little time to myself. And once I get myself together, then I'll come back and talk to you. But, but still, now healing can take place. Yes. Yeah. Now there's an opportunity for you to grow and learn from what has happened. But if you tell a lie. Just going to continue to go down and down. And that tell the lie is almost like trying to walk in quicksand. The more you move, the more you go down. The more you go down. 
The more you, the more you lie, the more you go down. Abram only told the lie because he feared that if he told them the truth, they would kill him. He must have forgot who said He must have forgot who he was serving. He must have forgot who he was working for. Because if he had the power to bring you from where you were to where you are right now, surely he got the power to sustain you where you are right now and to give you the strength to make it to where he wants you to be. We don't serve a God that will come and get you way out there in the earth, the cat way out there, wherever you were. You don't have a God that will come out there and just grab you and put you on this road for you to do something and then halfway to where he wants you to be, just yeah, give yeah, up yeah. on you and leave you out there by yourself. He said, I'll be with you always. Yes, sir. Even until the end of earth. So why are you fearing how people are going to react to the truth? Why are you afraid of how people are going to react when you try to share the gospel? Mm -hmm. Because if he's sustaining you, guess what? It, it ain't your, and, and understand, it ain't your job to convince nobody of the gospel anyway. Your job is simply to share, but I know sometimes we get discouraged because, oh, they didn't want to hear what I had to say. You know, they weren't receptive to what I had to say. You know, you, you, you ain't there for the planter. You don't worry about coming back because you don't worry about all the watering and all that. You let God do his work. All you need to do is go out there and plant the seed of the word of God into the present life. And you let God do the work. You let God do the work. Because now let's, let me tell you, man, once you have tasted of the goodness of Jesus. Come on, and in closing, I want to tell you this story. That was a, 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 an event that was going on. And they had this well-known um, atheist that was their speaker that day. And he was up there, I mean, he was just hounding down on God, hounding down on the Bible. It's not right. It's not true. And he got, and, and, and everybody in the crowd just clapping, woo, you know, just in agreement with what he was saying. And then it got down to the close, and he said, now the floor is open for anybody that would like to refute what I'm saying. Nobody got up, and then it was this old janitor that was back there in the back. He worked his way on up to the front. He said, oh, oh, this is going to be fun. Sir, what do you possibly have to say to me? The man, without saying anything, reached in his pocket and he took out an apple. He said, sir, this apple looks good, don't it? He said, yeah, it look, looks good. Looks good, you know, looks like good to taste, yeah. Nice, firm touch, yeah. But the only way I know it is good is if I taste. Yes, The only way I know it's good is if I taste yes. and if I see for myself. I want to know how many people in the house this morning have tasted of the goodness of Jesus. I want to know how many y'all have tasted. You ain't waiting on nobody to come along and remind you of the goodness of Jesus. But you have tasted and you have seen for yourself so you know what he has the power to do. Taste and see that the Lord he is good. He's not just good enough to come out there and get you. But he's good enough that as you walk this road of life, he's good enough to be with you every step of the way. Every step of the way, he's right there walking with you. So understand, your road is not going to be easy. As a matter of fact, you ought not want your road to be easy. You should want God to put a couple of trips and a couple of snares, a couple of pitfalls on your road because that allows you as a child of God to exercise. Because if he did not bring any of that stuff into your life, what would happen? you just sit back and yeah. get comfortable, yeah. get still stagnated, lazy. You know, don't, you know that, that's how we get. So those things have to come into our life to test us and to prove us as to whether or not we really have faith like we say that we have. So we're walking down this road today, and this road that we're walking on has an eventual destination. And that eventual destination, just like it was for them, is Canaan land. All of us trying to get there. We, we sing the song, every day I'm gathering 
towards the land of Canaan. And with rapture, I'll survey his wondrous beauty, grand glory, hallelujah. I found the land of promise. Yeah. And I'm camping. Yeah. I'm camping towards Canaan land. That's what, and let me tell you, if you want to get there, stick with Jesus. Yeah. Stay with the Lord and stay in the church. Yeah. I know there are so many things that are pulling at our attention and pulling at our mind. Keep your mind centered on Jesus. Yeah, Lord, Keep your mind on his word. Yeah. Keep your mind on what God has called you to do. And let me tell you, Satan will always put counterfeits out there. It's Michael Kors, the devil to put out there Michael Kurds. <laughs> supposed to be polo, the devil put polio out there. And, you know, and, and all this kind and, and you know, whenever there's a real, it's, it's always gonna be a counterfeit. Whenever there's a real, there's always gonna be a fake out there. And sometimes it looks so much, sounds so much like the real that you can get confused if you don't know what you're really looking at. And just like the Lord has the church that he established and fought with his blood, there are also people out there that have made up their own religions. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't know what you're looking for, what is the false? can oftentimes look like that which is real. So preacher, how can I tell that which is real from that which is false? According to the scripture. Yeah. According to the word of God. Yeah. Is it false? Does it go along with what the word of God has to say? And if at any moment it deviates from what the word of God says, now you have to ask the question, who gave you permission to do that? Did God call you? Hmm. Oh, yeah, Richie, he, he came to me in the middle of the night, about 2 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I heard something fall downstairs, and I got up, and I said, Self, 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 what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> and the, the Lord said, I want you to go and do this, and I want you to go there. And I said, Lord, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. Not knowing that it was the TV that was downstairs that was on. And, 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 it just sat, and you was caught up halfway between sleep and halfway between here, and you didn't know you could tell from which what was going on. So, whenever there's a real out there, yeah. Come on, there will you. always be a faith. As a child of God, as a student of the Word of God, you got to study to show yourself approved. Yeah. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, but what? <laughs> and let me tell you, if you do that, I don't care if any he and whoever can come knocking on your door and saying, I got this and I got that. I want to do this for you. I can do that for you. I can, I can do this. You will know as a child of God because you have studied the word. You will know what is right and you will know what is false. And when you get to that place, you won't be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine that comes through. But you will be able to get somewhere and get a foundation. Get a foundation. And your faith must be built from the word of God. Yeah. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ! Not this world, but on Christ! The solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. My brother and my sister, if you are here today, and you've been walking down the road of life and you understood, man, I've been trying to walk down this road. I've been trying to navigate this road by myself. And you come to a place where you recognize, man, I just can't make it down this thing by myself. I need someone to come along and to assist me. As I've already let you know, every step that you make, every move that you make, God is right there by your side. And if you're watching this morning, maybe you're here and you have not yet started your journey with God. I want to tell you that this journey that you walk on with Christ is not by any stretch of the imagination an easy journey. It's going to call for you to give up some things. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to cause for you to submit totally to the will of God. It's going to cause you to have to change in other aspects of your life. But can I tell you, it's the best decision, the best choice 
that you ever make in your life. And can I tell you, it got the best benefit package that this world could ever think of. Yeah. I'm talking about eternal life yeah. in heaven with our Father that he himself, according to John chapter 14, has gone away to prepare for us. And my brother and my sister, you asked preacher, well, how can I inherit eternal life? That's the same question that Nicodemus asked. Nicodemus asked the man, you know, the man told him, he said, you must be born again. He said, well, how can I be born again when I am old? He said, must I enter a second time into my mother's Come womb? On, Nicodemus you. wasn't being smart with the man. Come Nicodemus on. was really asking a true yeah. question. He yes, said, sir. okay. And yes, the sir. question that he was really asking was, by what means, by what process must I go by in order to inherit eternal yeah, life? Yeah. And one must be baptized, he said, for the remission of your sin. Now, preacher, are you telling me I, I, my, that somebody told me that baptism, baptism was just an outward sign of an inward grace? On, but I that. bet to differ with that evidence because if you already had that grace residing with on the inside of you, then what need do you have to be baptized? Come on, come on. If at the house, uh, uh, if when Peter preached at the house of Simon the Tanner, and the Bible says that those Gentiles that were there, they first, before they were baptized, received the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Now, if the outpouring of the Holy Spirit was just as good, and that's all that I had to do, then why did they have to be baptized for the remission of their sin? Because the Bible is near true, where it says that baptism do now save us. And you cannot become new. You cannot be recreated uh -huh. until you have died. Yes. You cannot lay down the old man and pick up the new man until you have died. Yes. Come on, come on, preacher. Until yeah. you've died to yourself. Yeah. Help me. Until you've died to your desires, your zeal. Uh -huh. Come on. Until you went down with him yeah. in the water of grave. Yeah. And the Bible says that just as Christ was lowered down into the earth. So we are lowered down. And, and it says that we rise up yes. to walk in newness of life. Come on, preacher. He gives you a new start. Come on. Listen, simply, Come on, he puts you on a new road. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. Now, it's up to you. Well, if you get off that road and get back on the road that you was praying and crying and asking God to get you off of. Now, it's, it's up to you whether or not you go back and get on that road. But Christ, once you become a new creation in him, he puts you on a new road. Yes, yes sir. sir. And now it's up to you. So don't let the devil get in your ear and say, well, you shall not surely die. Don't let the devil get in your ear and say, well, you, all, you might as well just lie. That's the easiest thing to do. It's going to be up to you as you walk this road to be who God has called you to be. Amen. And to live the life that God has called for you to live. And when you get weak, he'll give you strength. They give you strength to make it. If by chance you're watching here with us this morning and you yourself are standing in the need of salvation, reach out to us. We'll do everything within our power to help to assist you in that effort. And if you're watching today, maybe you're here, you're standing in the need of prayer. We pray that you would, if you have the church app, that you would send in your prayer request. Go on our website, send in your prayer request, message us if you feel comfortable. Comment and let us know how we can pray for you at this time. Because the Bible is still true that the prayers of the righteous, they avail as much. So if you're here today, if you're watching today, and you're subject to the invitation, we ask simply, don't put off today for what you plan on doing tomorrow. Come on to Jesus now. Together we stand and sing the song of invitation. Restore my spirit, Lord.